we are currently trying to cosmetically transform this B5S4. In the last episode, we started by updating the headlights and taillights to much more modern counterparts. That did quite a bit in terms of making the car look a lot better than it did, but we're not gonna stop there. We're starting a much more involved project this week, and I think it's gonna be a great opportunity to learn some brand new skills. We're starting the wrap for the S4 today. Couldn't be more excited. First thing we're gonna do is clean the car, then we're gonna go ahead and remove all the trim that we possibly can. This includes the front grills and the lights and the tail lights and all that jazz. We're basically gonna prep everything for vinyl and hopefully it's gonna be good. I have enough of the vinyl to do the car pretty much three times so we can mess up a lot and learn along the way. Wrapping a whole car is not a simple task, to say the least. There's a ton that goes into the entire process, from application to preparation. While I clean the dust off the car, let's talk about my expectations for this process. Do I expect to get this perfect on my first try? Absolutely not. Like I said, I ordered three times as much vinyl as I really need to do the car, specifically so that I can mess up panels as I learn and redo them when my technique improves. This is not something I can complete in a single episode, or a single weekend for that matter. But over the course of the next few episodes, I am going to learn the process and redo as many panels as I need to to practice new techniques to get this car looking as good as I possibly can. I can't promise perfection, but I can promise to learn as much as possible along the way. And that starts with the prep work you see me doing here. After washing the entire car, I decided to wet sand the front of the vehicle, namely the two front fenders and the front bumper, which is what we're going to be tackling today when it comes to vinyl wrapping. There are years of imperfections on the paint, and I want to sand those down to make it smooth so you can't see them underneath the vinyl. We're moving inside because it's a little windy. I think this was the better call anyways. We're doing the front of the car first, so we're gonna start taking apart everything. I decided to start with the front fenders. So the first thing I did was remove the turn signal bulb, but I dropped the wire into the fender, so I had to remove part of the wheel liner. This is just a minor detour that could have been avoided. There's a good amount of trim on this car, and specifically, we want to remove as much as we possibly can. There are two sets of door blades on the car. To make it look as good as possible, we want to remove these when it makes sense. The lower ones come out easily since they're simply screwed in place, but the top ones are riveted into the door, and I don't think we're going to remove those for our first attempt. We're almost ready to tackle our first panel, but there's a serious question that I still haven't answered yet. What color did I even choose? This is a color by Vivid known as Sonoma Green. I picked this one because I think dark green is one of the most underrated colors a car can come in. You hardly ever see it, and when you do, it's really special. The car also actually came in a rare dark green from the factory known as Cactus Green. This is a very different shade of dark green, but I think that goes to show that this color fits the spirit of this car. It isn't loud or obnoxious, it's honestly quite refined. And that's exactly what I was going for. Along with accumulating the vinyl, I've been collecting a whole slew of application tools that I think will be useful in installing this wrap. We've got squeegees, we've got knifeless tape, we've got magnets, we've got pretty much everything you would possibly need. I'm going to be attempting this solo, so the magnets are going to be super useful in holding the vinyl in place. This would probably be easier with a second person, but I don't have someone to do it with, so these magnets are going to be my co-pilot. Now all we have to do is get started. Before we actually cut the vinyl, I decided to modify the box that it came in to function as a roller so I could pull out just as much as I need at a time. I also re-removed the front headlights on the car. Huge shout out to the people in the comments of the last episode letting me know that I was missing a third headlight bolt. I didn't even know those were a thing since this car's been missing them as long as I've owned it. They're on the way now thanks to you guys. Even though I washed the car minutes ago, I'm going to re-clean each of the panels with isopropyl alcohol before laying the vinyl down just to minimize the chance that dust gets underneath it. 
I cut the vinyl roughly to shape and put it on loosely with magnets without removing the backing paper. Then I could take a razor blade and trim it a little bit more so that I don't have too much excess to play with. And once that's done, I go ahead and remove the backing paper, keeping the vinyl as close to the car as possible. The name of the game for approaching these fenders is glossing them out. I'm not a trained professional when it comes to doing this, so I'm mostly mimicking techniques that I've seen online. What I've noticed is they seem to try to find the straightest part of the car and tack that down with a squeegee first. Then you can lift up the edges of the vinyl and pull it tight so that it conforms to the shape of the car. Once there's no creases, you can tack it down with a squeegee. Then you go over that whole area with squeegees to make sure that no air possibly is in there. When you need to relieve tension in the vinyl, you can use the heat gun. During my very, very first attempt at vinyl wrapping, I thought the heat gun was used exclusively for stretching. It took me a while to realize that that's not entirely true. It's almost what I would classify as self-healing. When you heat it up, it's going to go back to its normal state. So if you get any sort of a crease in it, you can lift it up and heat it, and it's going to go back to what it was before it was creased. To say this stuff is forgiving is a complete understatement. I followed the same process for the rest of the fender, trying to go iteratively and glass out as much as I possibly could. When it came time to do the edges, I cut just enough film so that I could stretch it behind the actual fender itself. The light is going to hold it in place, but I still wanted enough to get back there. As far as the edges of the wheel well go, I tucked the vinyl under the wheel liner. I think this will be more than enough pressure to hold this in place permanently. Now for the first door blade. My goal for this was to keep the material loose while I pressed it into the edge of the door blade. I didn't want any tension that when the vinyl heated up would try to pull it out of being flush. I'll get lots of practice with this on the car since it goes around pretty much the entire vehicle, but this first attempt honestly was pretty good. The lower door blade was actually a lot easier because it both comes off and it's really easy to tuck behind. There's one screw holding this in place and then you can kind of slide it forward and then up to take it off. Once you cut the vinyl near the door crease, you can open the door and you have a lot of room to tuck the vinyl behind it. Halfway through the first panel, I was a little apprehensive about doing the rest of the car, but I started to gain confidence as this whole process went on. This is a pretty daunting task to take on if you've never done it before, and I struggled a lot mentally to try to convince myself that I could do it. At the end of the day, I know I can if I practice and try hard enough. So I think the best call I possibly made was to order so much extra vinyl. It kind of changes the framework you look at this entire process through. It is a safe environment to fail because I know I can just try it again and the only thing I lose is a little bit of time. At no point am I worried that I don't have enough material. It lets you really enjoy the process and see how satisfying vinyl wrapping can actually be. So if you're going to try it for your car, that's my biggest suggestion for you. Before we evaluate if we like this attempt for the fenders, we got to do the other side and make sure it's pretty even. It starts the exact same where you clean it off and then the rest of the process is just mirrored. Like normal when it comes to working on cars, doing something the second time goes a lot faster, and this second fender was no exception. I got everything cut and tucked, and now it's time to step back and evaluate how we think we did. Both front fenders are done, and they're looking pretty nice. I'm excited. I think we're going to try the bumper next. To be brutally honest, I think we kind of knocked it out of the park for these first panel. I couldn't find any dust or hairs trapped underneath the panels, and everything looks really, really smooth. This panel needs to rest a few days before we actually know if the material is going to lift, 
left, but unless it does, I really don't think we're going to need to redo the fender. Even though these are pretty easy panels, I'm pretty happy with the fact that these turned out good. This gave me just enough confidence to make a first attempt on a much harder panel, the front bumper. The bumper is a lot more complicated, and it has a lot more prep work, so the first thing I did was remove the headlight washers. I then took out the removable grills and wiped the whole thing down with isopropyl alcohol. Front bumpers are difficult because you can't always do them in one piece. Vinyl can only be stretched and bent so much before it won't actually maintain that shape. It'll either tear or lift and never stick properly. That's where inlays come in. There you use a second piece of vinyl which will stick since it doesn't have nearly as much tension in it. If you've never heard of inlays before, you might be thinking, hey, wouldn't you notice two different pieces of vinyl creasing? That's a really good question, and it's something that I was wondering at first as well. The cool thing about inlays is there are ways to hide the seam in natural creases on the bumper, or whatever panel you're doing. There isn't a guide for wrapping this specific bumper online, but I decided to look at it and look at all the potential options for where we could put an inlay if we needed it. The upper and lower half of the bumper are separated by a pretty notable crease which you can see here when I get the side glossed out. Looking back at this, you might be able to do this in one piece, but for my first attempt at this, which I'm likely going to redo, I decided to use this as a basis for an inlay. The top of the bumper can be done just like normal though. This front bumper is going to be the hardest part of the car to wrap, and I intentionally wanted to get a first attempt of this done first and early in the process of wrapping the car. I wanted to see where I struggled on this specifically so that when I do the rest of the car and get a little more comfortable with both the material and wrapping in general, I can come back to this with a refreshed mindset. In other words, we might end up redoing the front bumper depending on how this looks once we're done with the rest of the car. That is, if I think I can improve it, which more than likely I'll be able to. I think the main thing that I've learned from these initial few panels is that patience is key. This material is pretty delicate, so you have to know how to read the tension. You've got to learn to read the creases in the vinyl as a form of tension. Generally, when there's a crease in the vinyl, you want to look and pull the material perpendicular to that fold to relieve that pressure. Then you can go over it with a squeegee, and there's not that much tension in the material, so it'll gloss out perfectly. Here you can see me doing the first inlay. The bumper has a convenient design crease which we can use to perfectly hide an inlay. You can see it, obviously, if you look really closely, but at first glance, it's really hard to notice unless you know it's there. I am already thinking forward towards my second attempt at this bumper, even though I'm not going to do it yet. I really think if I used an extremely large piece of vinyl, we might be able to get most of this bumper done without an inlay. We're obviously going to have to use an inlay for the grills, but I think I'd be able to do the rest of the bumper in almost one piece. Or at minimum, I'd be able to do the top and bottom half of the bumper, each in their own single piece. We use a ton of inlays on this first attempt, and honestly, that's okay with me because I need as much practice as I can possibly get at this point. Even with this many, I think we can still get a really good looking first attempt. With the main portion of the bumper done, I decided to do both of the intercooler grills. I'm glad these come out because they are a lot easier to do when they're not attached to the car.
I really started to see the whole picture come together when I installed this part of the bumper. It's starting to look like a really intentional process now that more panels are done. Oh, and for now, don't worry about that extra vinyl underneath the bumper. We've got a brand new front lip to put on the car, and that's going to cover up that entire section of the bumper anyways. Wrapping the other intercooler grill was nearly as easy as wrapping the first one. When I finished up this intercooler grill, the next step was to wrap the top of the headlight washers. Small pieces like this are extremely easy and straightforward to wrap. I think it took a little over 5 minutes for both of them, which isn't bad at all. The first attempt on the front of the car is now done, and for us to properly judge how we did, I think we should loosely install the headlights and close the hood to see what everything looks like. Remember, the hood is only black now to see if we like the contrast that a carbon hood would provide before spending money on one. I am still on the fence about it, so I'd like to hear what you guys think would look best. Do you think we should pick up a carbon hood, or do you think we should wrap the hood to match the rest of the car? Either way, we're going to make the car look even better. This is a really fun but time-consuming process. I'm going to take my time with it, so I'm going to be splitting it up into a few episodes. Here's how far we got today on the wrap. I am extremely happy so far. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. The support you guys have been giving me is absolutely insane and I cannot wait to keep working on this channel and furthering these projects. I think we can make some truly special cars. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. It's the best way to support my channel. Like I said, I have so much in store for this car over the next few weeks. Lots of surprises and lots of things to look forward to. I hope you're as excited as I am. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.